cause of this destruction is human overpopulation and agriculture. Yet we do little to regulate this. 70% of the world's food is controlled by five global corporations and contains just 14 plants and five animals. World food production is declining due to destruction of soils, despite increased chemical and genetic pollution, corruption of nature. Our lives are dominated by market economic forces which select for short-term profit and overconsumption, both manifestations of the human instinct of greed. Controlled by global and moral corporations, to not regulate the market to force it to do what is good, more for the people, life on earth is insane. Solar energy. The sun puts out more energy in one second than humanity has consumed in its entirety. We need only 1% of the sun's energy that reaches the earth to power human civilization. Wow. We have known of the photoelectric effect for 100 years, yet only in the past 10 years has there been significant research and development of solar cells. Already they can be manufactured at a dollar per watt. And within 10 years they will be a fraction of that price. Basically, we have a free, green, nuclear power station in the form of our sun, yet we continue to build nuclear and coal gas power stations. There's another problem. The world's wealthiest nation, USA, is bankrupt, with a foreign debt that it cannot pay, and it continues to overconsume. At the same time, China, who has a large surplus by selling things to the USA, has most people working in poorly paid jobs, i.e., China creates wealth, USA consumes it while bankrupting the nation. The other thing is the war on terror. This causes of terrorism are related to cultural myths and lack of education, injustice, and an unfair distribution of wealth. Yet we deal with terrorism by killing terrorists, or people we claim to be terrorists without any process of law and justice. This is a state-sanctioned murder, and it obviously increases the motivation of terrorists. Did you read the whole thing? Uh, no, not the whole thing, but... It sounds so. pretty intense. Yeah. They have this weird mix out there of, uh, that Andrew bought of... It's like wasabi and nuts and dried fruit. I thought he made his own mix. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Did you mix, like, yeah. two or three different things I know what together? you're talking about. It's like the Austin, Austin nuts. Sweet, was... salty, and then you have wasabi spice. Yeah. So I got us this beer while I was out there. Right on. To produce more conversation. I don't yeah. know what it is. When I'm stoned, the first drink of a beer is just the best thing in the world. And then after that, it like is less impressive with each sip. <laughs> yeah, black like that shit. So what else? Oh yeah. I had another point, or a point I was going to bring up. So this guy says, truth is the only cure for the insanity of humanity. All those things we're doing that are like self-inflictive, that are like mm -hmm. the reason we have sadists and masochists and people that just like slowly kill themselves by just letting themselves degrade mentally and physically. That's all because we're insane and our fruits of that are doing rotten shit to the water, to the air, to the earth, to, to the forest, to the rain. Yeah, and the same thing's happening psychologically. Mm -hmm. That's what like Carl Jung, like Sean was talking about, is all about. And Eric Fromm is another one that he, his thing that always sticks out to me is freedom and how he describes it as a psychological problem and how we have to analyze how that, how the think about language and a word freedom and how that even gets constructed in your brain made like that idea is implanted in you you just you don't know what freedom is you're taught to understand a concept of freedom i don't know what truth is or like i don't know what the truth is and i definitely don't yeah, yeah freedom we, we should i mean truth is that you know your your heart's beating and you're breathing and you're conscious and you can say i'm here i'm alive yeah I want to. I feel like I want to say and that. There's things more, that feel that more. Connect with that and feel like that. That same experience. When you fall in love, you lock eyes with someone. You trust them. Or when you just see somebody and you don't even know who they are. They're a stranger, but you lock eyes and connect and, um, and give each yeah. other the okay without you know. It's 
Alaska, so. If you take a Greyhound ride and, like, talk to the person you sit next to, <laughs> it's also kind of magical. I don't know if it's, uh, if it's good conversation. So this thing I wanted to read real quick, just because it seems like in Sean's podcast, or maybe not the podcast, but as when we were talking today, we were hanging out with Sean today, a recurring thought that seemed to come up, or maybe I just imagined it was uh, the, the collected knowledge of man or the works of man. Like He mentioned the, the Library of Alexandria and uh, all the things that were destroyed, like records destroyed by Christians, these you know amazing uh, works collected but then destroyed which well, what are you going to do you know so this yeah. this thing I stumbled across or that someone um, as long as there's been conquest of people there's been conquest and control over information and like for the sure, stories yeah. of we're who we are we're still doing that our too. identity yeah. and our real Fuck origins yeah. propaganda whoever can control is, that story uh, controls the world is the idea of I think the yeah. psychopathic people who like feel like I'm going to I'm gonna conquer. <laughs> or with Christians, it's just like the, it was against God. It's like what you have your own other religion. The devil must have gone back in time and planted something that predates our like Christian God. We got to burn. <laughs> like they really feared that uh, I don't know something bad would happen. It would be a negative Christianity thing, whatever that is. You go to hell. Like you're divorced from God if you don't eradicate uh, or um, extradite this other shit this pagan shit like to them it was critical i don't think they were just being assholes like if you really believed it then that stuff was critical you needed to burn it you needed to get rid of those beliefs you needed to kill off those souls do whatever you yeah. needed to do to convert them you need truth you need to shed because light because if you, on if you the really believe the story everything it's yeah. like it's like he was saying about um like i think sean mentioned something about a lack of love or a um no self-love, mm -hmm. which, yeah, I think that's very key. And the other thing is this new system of false love and how we've, like, embraced that, and that's just, like, this... What do you mean, false just, love? Like, self-loathing that gets, like, covered up with uh, retail therapy? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. And, like, um, just white lies and reinforcement of people's emotions to give them illusions that you love them because they need it for their... You're looking at it more like a like a psychologist or something doing tricks with a, a dog or a pet to make it feel better but out of, sometimes out of love you have to tell mm -hmm. people what's real and hit them with something that you know maybe they don't want to hear and then you know this false love can be like to say you love someone but really it's a codependent you know selfish relationship mm -hmm. where you're just feeding off of each other and it may be viewed as love you may do things in the name of love for each other but your idea of love together you've created with each other and it's this artificial thing that's I mean I think this if you don't have self love there's no way you could have some real love with someone else definitely you know? so not the false love yeah. is this, this like if you it's don't way to love yourself, people yeah. with the idea of love. If and I you think hate yourself, lot, there's like, no way you're just gonna drive uh, the like, other person the crazy. Rate. I think that's what the core of what I'm saying. Just look at the divorce yeah. rate. Yeah, well, look at the odds like, of a. Is this a really love? Is this really sacred? But yeah. even the non-divorce rate. Yeah. What about those people who just hang in there and are just dead inside, just fucking crippled or just shitty because they. Uh, they really prefer the, the misery they inflict on each other over the misery they might inflict on themselves in a solo life. So they just hang in there, and it's not even love, you know? Yeah. People stay married. Sure. More people get divorced than stay married, and it's, then it's most the marriages are still that, shitty. Like, we participate in this system. It's out of fear. It's out of, like, violence and this idea that, like, you can't survive without this thing. You actually need me. Like, I'm going to... I'm enabling you to live. Yeah, you depend on me. It's that master-slave relationship almost mm -hmm. at that point. You're, you're, you're too scared to go out on your own again. That's too scary, so I'll just settle with you. I'll limit my the rest of my life to the standards of this fake husband and wife relationship we fucking got <laughs> ourselves into. Like, we'll stick yeah. it out with each other. Eh, fuck it. Yeah, it's like... It, 
Speaking of that, though, it was just like self-love and like genuine love. When we were um, a New Year's Eve, like when we were all uh, just hanging out at, at Hector and Shanna's and just uh, rolling like on all that ecstasy and feeling so great and so loving, and it was a really cozy environment. Uh, someone that like someone there was talking to me outside and was like, you know, man, I really want to quit drinking. But I'm drinking so much, like I'm afraid it's gonna be a big deal. Like it's gonna be a big fucking deal to quit drinking. But of course I was on ecstasy, so I'm like, I know how to do this. It's like, you know, we'll pick a weekend. You just need three days. Any addiction on earth, you just need three days. So I was like, man, I'll just come over with like a bunch of weed and like some, uh, you know, klonopin or melatonin or whatever. And we just stay in like a semi-sleepy haze and just like eat junk food and watch uh, stupid movies or watch documentaries for three days and you'll be fine. You know, we'll start Friday, you won't drink while you're at work, and then by Sunday you'll be good to go. Or whatever, by Monday's, you know, work day, you'll be, you'll be fine. And uh, but normally you wouldn't do that. In most situations you'd be like, oh, oh man, that sucks. Like you, you shy away from it, but really you should probably always go with the impulse you would have had if you were on a shitload of ecstasy. <laughs> Which is like, yeah, I'll help you with that. Like, if you're gonna, you know, if you're going to trust me enough to be vulnerable around me, yeah, I owe you like every uh, advantage well, I can give you. Everything is as it should be, and you're living in yeah. that magical place where everything falls into place effortlessly. You'll do anything for anybody, and everyone's your friend. Even if you're it's just like, not, hey man, yeah. we got heaven here. What do we? I mean, I had tons of time for you. But it was in heaven. Like in that moment, he's like, "Man, I need to, I need to face something." Whatever the the great feeling you get from ecstasy brought him to a reality point. Like he was facing a reality. It's like I need to stop. I don't know how to stop this. And it was a, this vulnerable moment. And it's like, man, that shit is real. Like I've thought of heavy stuff on ecstasy, and it's not just heaven in those moments. You know, it's not. You know, I don't do it often. It's not a very heavy drug but occasionally you can get into a heavy thought pattern on ecstasy and yeah. you really see the truth like you would with LSD or mushrooms uh -huh. and uh, yeah, I feel like he was saying the, the barriers uh, yeah. the social things and uh, the culture symbols the facade slips but instead you of do what, enough of it your identity and yeah. your whole everything see, well, that's where the road kind of forks it's like you become just like this alien of vibrations yeah. and warmth and sensations <laughs> And that's a fucking interesting place. The, You're like um, a amoeba of orgiastic fucking vibrations. Shaking eyes, and can I just get a light show? But with LSD or mushrooms, it's so much more shattering. It's like you were free of uh, pretense and bullshit because you had your shit smashed with hammers. And uh, the more you tried to put up a fight, the more it just fucking punched holes in your uh, whatever you constructed to try and save yourself from reality. Uh, but with ecstasy, it's totally different, yeah. It's like, you know, and the deeper you go, the more it's like nothing's gonna matter. You don't need to articulate anything. It's just pure shaking, quivering ecstasy. But yeah, so I digress to the, uh, but th but yeah, I'm totally gonna do that. And I don't, I don't even care if it fails. Like if I, if I go do this, have this weekend of like pot smoking, movie watching, just anti-alcohol weekend. If you can make it three days, you're good, but psychologically, he could drink, you know, the following Tuesday, but I don't give a shit. We'll just do it again. Yeah. I feel like that's how it should be. If it's important to him, we should we're, just we're give. We're pretty malleable, man. Yeah, let's it's just give it a go. Diet, food, we'll give it a go drugs, every couple of months all kinds until. Of things, yeah. The right kind of exercise, yeah. and uh, you could torture yourself. You could do something really healthy for yourself and go on a minimal diet of really pure shit and high energy shit only, and uh, you know. You could do, you could transform. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, let me read this thing real quick. So uh, a lot of the things I've been hearing uh, from Sean and Lionel and just from uh, everywhere, all the good sources I have in my life available to me is, uh, you know, the collected knowledge of man. So this other subject I stumbled upon in a book that I've been reading about it. Uh, it's called the Akashic Records. So I'll just read you this blurb that explains what that is. Uh, the Akashic Records contain every thought, emotion, action, and experience that has ever occurred in time and space. Your personal Akashic Records contain every piece of information regarding your soul's experience. In the records, you can learn about your relationships, your health, your soul, your path, and every other conceivable topic regarding you. 
Because the information of the Akashic Records is held in the energy of love, the answers you receive to questions during an Akashic Record reading offer helpfulness and hopefulness as well as profound empowerment through knowing the truth of your situation and the possibilities unfolding in your life. And there's more about it, like the other interesting thing about this, and uh, this is just some ancient, like, you know, like tarot cards or whatever, some ancient pagan shit that is now very new agey, and the books are kind of almost insufferable because they're so in a, uh, new agey. But the idea is really cool and profound. It's that we've, there is a collected body of knowledge that is, that is man, that is everything we have experienced, and that we are this energy that plays itself out in many lifetimes, and it's very likely that we cling to the same balls of energy. So like your family, your friends, coworkers, whoever has a serious you know, recurring role in your life or some kind of impact on you, has been there before and it's very likely that roles were reversed too so if like someone who's your mother in this life you may have been their father or their uncle or something or their teacher in a life a thousand years ago you know and it's it's uh, yeah it's wild to think about. it's wild to think about but uh, what i like about it is even on the on the like slim chance or whatever on the any chance that it's true it's really exciting to think about the responsibilities that you now have because that might, might, might be true. Well, I which, like thinking of consciousness as this physical yeah. thing, like a grid of energy, and like us as satellites, human biocomputers that can like tune into mm -hmm. all of these. Like, I think we could. Honestly, I think there's lots to be said about any kind of psychic phenomenon. I don't think yeah, it has it's to like be a reinterpretation a of the muse. It's like, yeah. like you're saying, you look at nature and how nature works. Why wouldn't we have attributes that nature has? And nature does some phenomenal, fucking crazy shit where non-local communication happens, fucking colors and mutations change, and like, uh, yeah. So if it's if it's capable of doing that, we're made of the same shit, you know? Yeah. And. Uh, the other thing is... Um, I feel kind of like drunk off this beer. I'm checking to see what the alcohol content level... I think it's because we smoked pot and took like that little bit of kratom <laughs> and, and now I drank like half a beer kind of fast. Um, what got me into the... Um, uh, you were talking about Akashic Records, information, let's see... But what I was going to say, so the... Um, the thing that makes it cool is, if that is true, then you really are supposed to work hard. The people who are on yeah. the fringes of your social circle or your family, if there's anyone in your life that you see often enough right. that you feel there's this weird static, like, why do I just never get along with that person? Why are we like opposing magnets whenever we enter the same room together? Sure. We'll fucking go a mile out of our way to not encounter each other or yeah. have a conversation and when so we do like it's just coded things yeah. there in your yeah, well, yeah cuz maybe a thousand years you know maybe maybe it keeps replaying itself out so yeah. maybe it's fucking major critical that you be nice mm -hmm. and figure that shit out and come to a, an understanding and communicate with that person because if you don't do it it's just going to keep playing right. out over and over again and you like you can really have a, a huge impact on the universe by just being nice to somebody close to you, which is so just easy. Being open, yeah, honest, honest, like, yeah, communicating and uh, not hurtful, like, like not yeah, being honest and, and raw, but not like seeking to fucking uh, reduce yeah. someone or debase yeah. someone. Like when you see an opportunity to judge someone or criticize someone, you can exercise this whole other way of thinking where mm -hmm. you actually engage that person in a positive way about it and you talk about it. I mean, just, just, just real communication, being open and honest. I'm just honestly going to tell you, you know, this is how I feel. What do you think about that? Yeah. You can resolve so many fucking problems, like uh, patterns that you have between you and some other people you're related to that are negative and they always happen you can break those patterns by being open and honest like mm -hmm. reveal the contents of your mind and actually say what it is even if it might you know ruffle some feathers or fucking make somebody cry for a moment you'll get past it yeah. afterwards and, and then like, you damn well at least I see now I see true and like, you segue clarity. into this new reality and that's yeah, and, which is in an illusion which is completely <laughs> novel so it's like yeah, you did the yeah. hard thing, you took the so hard like medicine. A gift. It's like a gift of clarity. Totally, if everybody's yeah. asleep or an illusion, those are gifts of clarity that we should be thankful for. We should honor people that speak out and 
call out fucking things and whistleblow and are really radical and are critique our society mm -hmm. and cr critique our whole like structure of life and how we like all follow in the single file line in these like cultural trends and popular trends and just like patterns of behavior. How did those all get there? They were programmed just like a computer is programmed and you have to be able to step back and see yourself without it, love yourself, know yourself, and then if you still want to go back to that circus and live off of that system, great. But I think that's what mm -hmm. we're here to do, is we're here to like actually find yourself, like ex explore that, figure, become whole, know yourself. And then if you want to play in the circus and interact in all of the wonders here, you know, go ahead and use it. There's, yeah, great, but, but there's great hotels here and services. <laughs> and or the accommodations the are fucking fucking The snacks get more amazing every decade. Yeah. Like, uh, Everything is by, a, like, a push of a button. Everything is automatic. Everything is, you know, there for you. But you then just you... have to, you know, pay for your cell that you live in and, you know, live in this, live in this framework and live by these predefined, you know, liberties and freedoms and laws and all of that stuff which is just man-made um, rules to control that's i mean i don't think they're they're real things that god made or nature made so i think that requires some deep investigation if you're going to live your life along those lines and abide by these things you should really know what the hell is a life what does it even mean to be alive who am I? And I don't think most people have those basics figured out. I think most people, yeah, like, yeah. That, those questions are fucking alien and make them feel uncomfortable. <laughs> and that's about... And even if you are thinking about state of how kind of sick people are. Right. Just like, what, who, what are you talking about? I don't think we have those things figured out. Are you a happy consumer? Yeah. What are you, a worker? <laughs> what do you, what do you do? What is, what is... Like, if you're a bio That's always computer, a great question, yeah. What, is what do you input? do? What is the input? mostly and what is the output mostly on your bio computer if you're a computer like what are you feeding yourself what's going into your brain what's what are you taking into your to your body through every sense you have and then what are you sending out what are your vibrations what's your output to family friends people you see and people you talk to on the phone or the internet <laughs> and that's that's pretty much what we're working with. That's what. That's how we work. We're little machines, and I think we're taking in a lot more than we're putting out. I think we're going kind of on autopilot on this. We're just taking the shitty Windows software. We're like, yeah, that's what everybody else is buying. Just buy it, and then we're not like actually looking at this computer and being like, well. Do we even need this? What about what's an optical drive? Maybe I don't even want an optical drive. What if I'm a computer? Like I can be all kinds of things. I should look at the full spectrum of what a computer can be and what I can feed it, and you know, um, and what can come out of it. What you can share, what you can link up with. If we think of ourselves like that, yeah, the um, the amount of input is insane. It's like sensory overload. It's high tech. It's so fast. It's like fucking. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger action movie special effects life, and it's in every flavor, every color, and off of every screen you see everywhere. So overstimulated, we have too many options of what reality could be, too many different false fucking you know, movements and ways to look at life that uh, we're bombarded, and we end up just going, Uncle, okay, I give in, whatever. And then once you do that, you see. Well, look, there's lines here. It's just neat. And you just follow these people and do the look. This is easy now. Now that you've just given in, look, there's this whole fucking trail of breadcrumbs here and little <laughs> trinkets that you buy and little, like, tickets you consume. And it's a game. This is fun. You'll play it for a while. And then you won't. <laughs> yeah, we've got things that you can worship, like fucking athletes and uh, Jesus. And... Yeah. We've what got, what yeah. can we worship? That's a good topic. Keep talking about that. Because I've been thinking about, like, warriors and heroes and icons and fucking, you know, 
Michael Jackson and fucking just prophets and Gandhi, Krishnamurti and just like people that had spirit and soul and light and people that actually made us fucking think and remember for a moment and they're still in our brains they still are like yeah. immor- they're sort of immortal because uh, we keep e- they're like the new archetypes they're forming oh definitely yeah Bill, like Bill Hicks for sure be one um I don't know, but I would think all those people would probably not want you to worship them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, the the whole celebrity lifestyle and how we worship that is going. I mean, it's going on anyway. We can't help like it's like our worship worship our idols. Be the false or not? Is there food there's, or something? Yeah, there's like a salad, like a lightly cooked salad. Want to take a break? I want to get some salad. Yeah. 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 yeah.